welcome with us today in the Makers and Shapers. We are talking about digital finance and you are the CEO of the European Banking Federation. Can you briefly tell us about the mission of your organization? The European Banking Federation is a federation of federations. Uh, 32 countries are a member, not only the countries of the EU, but also those of the EFTA and the EEA. We bring together around 3,500 banks in Europe uh, and we are the main representative. We are uh, based in Brussels because our main interlocutors are the European institutions, but we also have a small office in Frankfurt in which we do most of the, of the supervisory. During this current COVID crisis, a lot of entrepreneurs, but especially also startups are struggling. Uh, they are in danger because of cash flow issues investors stepping back, customers uh, being hesitant on innovations. What can the members of your organizations do to get those new innovative companies through this? This is really an unprecedented health crisis. And banks have been part of the solution because indeed uh, it is in kind of situations like this, this that the European Banking Federation, because of our close contact with the European institutions, but because of the regional spread of our organization, we also have been able to talk to national governments directly on how to guarantee payments, how to make sure that there are payment holidays, how to create moratoria for repayment. So people get a little bit more uh, air. We are supporting and banks are supporting their clients with liquidity support to make sure there is money, liquidity in the short term for, for entrepreneurs and to make sure that the digital infrastructure of banks is, is functioning. Having said that, of course, this will be difficult. And, and I really sympathize with all the startups who really were starting to fly and who now find themselves in an impossible situation. If you look at investment in Europe, especially in startups and scale-ups, it's far less than, for example, in the US. And sometimes founders complain that European investors are risk averse. Do you recognize this? There is, I think, easy access to finance, but the strange phenomena in Europe is that it is a, a bank financed economy. 80% of our finance is uh, dealt with by banks, whereas the United States, as you know, 80% is dealt with by the capital market. Um, so the access to finance is very easy. And by access to finance, I mean access to credit. But indeed, what entrepreneurs need is not credit, is not debt, is equity. And here you need uh, a capital market and easy access to a capital market. I think this crisis is a, a great excuse to do more and to do faster. And I always call on the European Commission to to, to be more entrepreneurial, the transformation to a, to a sustainable economy may help us here because indeed it will require a, a different lifestyle, but it also brings to us incredible chances, incredible opportunities for entrepreneurs to really bring innovative style products to the market. So yes, there is a different mentality, a different trichology, but I would say access to finance is available and indeed access to capital market finance can be and should be better. Digital transformation has an enormous impact also on the financial sector. And as you just mentioned already, the COVID crisis acts as a accelerator. What kind of accelerations of digital transformation do you expect in areas such as open banking, but also how incumbent players act upon new entrants. Innovation in banking has been going on for many years already, and indeed it has been accelerated by COVID-19. The infrastructure is all there. And what was important for consumers to know is that the resilience of the infrastructure when people massively started to pay online and through contactless payments was safe. And also we haven't seen an increase in cyber uh, attacks, only phishing, and that's the old fashioned way by email, but not on the infrastructure itself. For me, that was very important. Open banking is interesting, but open banking is only part of the story in my view. Open banking is part of a data-driven society and the whole data-driven society will be much broader and needs to be regulated and it needs to create opportunities. 
partly, of course, privacy. That's why we have the general data protection regulation, but also rules of engagement if we want to keep a resilient payment system like the Payment Service Directive 2. So if you look at new players, yes, they're welcome. And yes, they will push, push us to energy. They will push us to, uh, uh, to innovation but they have to abide the rules to stay safe. As you just mentioned in your previous answer, data is very important for today's economy and also for digital banking services and for the whole digital finance domain. Some techniques that are emerging are artificial intelligence, blockchain. Are your members experimenting with these technologies and what of kind of advantages do they expect from these technologies? Banks really do believe in uh, artificial intelligence that AI and AI algorithms will offer a uh, privacy safe way to create algorithms and to look for patterns and patterns of behavior in large data. With all the speed and with the instant payments, you can also see that there's an opportunity for criminal networks to penetrate. In the past, if there was a dodgy transaction, it would take us, give us at least 24 hours for overnight processing to stop the transaction. Now with instant payments, the name says all, it's instant. So you can see criminal networks and see what they do and when they uh, transfer uh, illegal money. Because I do believe that it's very important that the uh, banking system stays clean of that. If you look at uh, distributed ledger technology, and we've seen the bitcoins that make central banks nervous because indeed you create money that is outside the circle of central banks. So I'm quite happy that the central banks have called on and are now looking uh, to the possibility of standing coins. Again, it will be a big step forward, but you can do much more with distributed ledger. Some people said when it started that it would uh, replace the payment system. And we now know how much energy it takes. It won't replace the, uh, the payment system soon. But if you have lower volume transactions like export credit or like uh, the trade in less liquid shares, I can very well imagine that is now very much done, done by hand and uh, is a slow process and a very documented process. Uh, export credit is a typical example that that can be replaced by uh, distributed ledger technology and will be good for everybody. Digital transformation of the banking sector, of course, requires digital talent. Digital talent is very rare. It's scarce. Does your community take specific actions to attract and also rescale talent? Talent is indeed essential. And in Europe, we should ask ourselves if we have enough talent in the digital and data field. Is it attractive to work for a bank? In the past, I would say no. But if you look at the new generation, what they want is to be stimulated, to get responsibility. And they also want purpose in their career. And so over the last years, the amount of uh, digital talent that has chosen to work for a bank has grown. Also, the way in which banks work, the whole idea is that talent is able to communicate and discuss and give a meaningful contribution to developments. And we believe that goes much faster. Is it enough? No. Last year, I had a long discussion with Commissioner Gabriel on digital talent. And one of the things that we worried about is that even if all the men in Europe who choose a digital career, we still would not have enough uh, if you take into account the demand of the working force. So there I signed with her the declaration uh, called Digital for Her. And the whole idea is to stimulate more women to pursue a, a career in digital, to pursue a career in tech, because we need uh, more talent, we need more people, and we need to do it well. Some of these regulations are there to stimulate innovation. At the same time, regulation can also hinder innovation. How does your community look at this? In my view, a regulator is to set boundaries and it's up to entrepreneurs and innovators to innovate. So uh, regulation creates a level playing field uh, in which business can thrive. Uh, and in which new, new developments are stimulated. The whole idea to stimulate innovation through regulation is, uh, in my view, a questionable one. Nevertheless, a lot has been done. And indeed, 
in my view, that was driven a lot by the data-driven society, where you have large platforms like Google, like Amazon, who offer easy services, but who are into the business of data analysis. Uh, compared to traditional banks who have a huge amount of data of their customers, but we only use them transaction relation, uh, related. And that creates a new field. And it is right that the European Commission stepped in and said, if we have this new, uh, new field, we need to deal with some safety measures for consumers in Europe. So indeed, uh, the general data protection regulation was uh, to deal with the privacy of citizens in an online world. Uh, and it makes sense. PSD2 is to stimulate uh, innovation and to help innovation in the payment environment and to enable all players to innovate. Nevertheless, you need rules again for the privacy of citizens, but you also need rules for uh, safety. Cybersecurity is so important in this COVID-19 crisis. We've been so dependent on our digital infrastructure that if something happens, it is a, immediately a national disaster. So uh, regulation can stimulate and it should protect. Uh, our uh, political leaders are chosen to protect our society uh, and at the same time enable entrepreneurs to, uh, to innovate uh, um, in new ways and in exciting ways. And the data-driven society will bring us this opportunity. It will bring the opportunity for banks. It will bring the opportunity for startups, scale-ups, and for the big platforms. But it should be within the rules of safety, of privacy, and cybersecurity. Wim, thanks a lot. Thank you very much.